fall uh we say uh your your children see Ambassador Rajan, Bhattacharya, friends, um thank you very much for giving me this uh honor. Uh and uh, I hope that uh, by the time I finish you don't revise either the global or the thinker part of the award. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, you know, I think it's a very, very general title, Our Troubled Times, because our times are troubled in many, many different ways. Uh, one could talk about the global meltdown, financial meltdown, the world is facing, which is going to take its toll yet for some more uh, months and perhaps years. Uh, one, I could talk about climate change and, and global warming as another uh, part of a troubled times, I could speak about terrorism, uh, I could speak about the general uh, endemic problems of poverty and malnutrition and uh, maternal mortality and various problems like that. Uh, I, I think I'm going to try and uh, put together these, uh, these sorts of uh, ideas in a, in, a different, in a different way. And I'm going to talk about uh, challenges that India faces rather than the world faces. And to me the challenge in their faces was very much epitomized by what happened on 26-11. What happened on 26-11 in Bombay, where for about 59 hours, uh, 10 terrorists held Mumbai to ransom. And uh, there were several deaths, some of them brave but futile, uh, others uh, accidental, and, and some obviously of the, of the terrorists themselves uh, intended. And I think what, uh, in, the, in the wake of that crisis, a lot of dissatisfaction, a lot of public meetings, people were agonizing as to what they could do, what was it that uh, uh, this, this particular uh, event told them. And I think one has to understand the nature of the event, why it was such a shock, and why in response to that event, not only now but in the future, one has to actually think much more about the nature of India than about anything else. And I, my, my feeling uh, was, of course, that when it happened, you know, in a sense, like many, many of us, I watched it, quote, live on television. Uh, and there are two feelings. First of all, that it was war. It was war on India. It was not, in any sense, a war on a five-star hotel or two five-star hotels in Bombay. And while some people tried to minimize it, that people were only worried about this five-star hotel uh, guests and so on. It was not a, an attack on five-star hotels. Not only was the, the Victoria Terminus, the Chetapati Shivaji Terminus, involved where lots of uh, ordinary uh, people also died, but there was a Karma Hospital, there was a, the Leopold Cafe, there was the Riman House. In a sense, there was enough of the edge of Bombay, which is in a sense, and still remains, was and still remains, uh, a beacon of cosmopolitan life in India. Uh, it was an attack on a cosmopolitan idea of India. It was an attack on all of India. And the reactions, in my view, from the political establishments were grossly inadequate. And they were grossly inadequate because I think it is a failure of ideas. The first reaction that I heard from the local MP uh, was uh, uh, Devra, Milin Devra. His first reaction was a typical reaction of uh, uh, the UPA and, and the like that. He says, I hope there are no communal rights involved. Uh, I, I want, it's not that I, I wish that there were communal rights in Bombay, but I want to point out that, in a sense, at a very crucial moment when a lot of people 
felt or should have felt that all India was under attack. The first worry a lot of politicians have is that India is not one. And indeed they say India, they see India as divided. Perhaps they don't want to see divided as divided. That was not the perception of the people who were standing outside. The more you saw the perception of people who were standing outside day after day, was that we were all together under attack. It was not an attack on a community or by a particular community. It was an attack by an alien element on all of India. But it was not clear that the politicians could articulate what India it was that was under attack. Because only a few days previously, one tendency in uh, Indian politics, BJP, Shiv Sena, VHP, etc., had attacked Hemant Kankaran uh, and suspected him of uh, being a traitor to India because he was investigating the bombing at Malagam. I've already said how the Congress UPA reaction was also quite partial in terms of is the secular is secular India under under threat. Uh, the Prime Minister, who was actually a very nice man, did not appear before uh, before the country till 20 hours after the attack happened. And indeed, the most remarkable thing about those 59 hours was how leaderless India was left. Yes, the commandos came and helped. The, the naval, the naval uh, commandos and NSG helped and the police and the firemen helped and the staff of the hotels were excellent. All that is true. But India, Bombay was leaderless. There was nobody who was able to articulate what had happened to India at that time because there was confusion. The Prime Minister, I'm told, did not appear because next day there was voting in Madhya Pradesh and he felt that by his intervention he might be accused of affecting election outcomes. Uh, in, in a sense, this, this, is, this, is a, this is one of the symptoms, I feel, of what the problem is. Now, I want to, I just taking that as an example, because I want to point, I want to say that what really has happened in the last few years, the last two decades and so on, that the, the idea of India, which as it were was present and live and vibrant in the, in the first few years after independence, has this degree. We don't have a, what I would call a narrative of India as a nation. The narrative of India as a nation was constructed in reaction to the critique of a foreign power, of a foreign culture, which said, you're not a nation, you're just a collection of religions and regions and castes and, and ethnicities and tribes and so on. That was, the, that was the accusation that the British made against India. Now, at that time, the first few people who were articulated, the first few people who had received Western education in the middle of the 19th century, rose to this challenge. They had imbibed the notion, uh, idea of nation, history of how nations are made, what nations were at that time forming in Europe. Uh, they, they had imbibed those ideas and they reacted to the challenge. But you know, of course we are a nation. Uh, how dare you say we are not a nation? Uh, there was another uh, response possible, which I feel it, it never came to them, which is to say, Europe is not a nation, why should we be a nation? What's all this about? 